Back at it again, and we've got to talk about this uh, Speaker of the House race once again. This thing has turned into an absolute drama show. Like, share, comment, and hit that subscribe button if you are new. And let's dive in. Get out of this. You may not get Jim Jordan as speaker. You may get someone more moderate. What did you actually get for leading this charge to push out Kevin McCarthy? We're shaking up Washington, D.C. We're breaking the fever. And you know what? It's messy. But the only reason people think there's chaos in this town right now is because the special interests aren't in control anymore. So I think we're going to have an upgrade at the position of Speaker of the House. For me, it was never about any one person. It was about it was about ensuring that we got an upgrade at the position. Kevin McCarthy had failed us. He'd made multiple contradictory promises. We weren't really governing under McCarthy. Everybody's making this big deal out of the fact that you know, we've burnt the equivalent of four legislative days on all of this. But, I mean, we've spent like seven legislative days on post offices and procedural votes, for goodness sakes. This is what it's supposed to be. And it's not clean and it's not orderly. And the lobbyists and the special interests hate it. But I don't seem to mind too much. So did you catch what he said there? They're, it's, they only feel, think it's chaotic because the lobbyists aren't in control anymore. Uh, McCarthy isn't uh, sitting in that seat any longer and just listening to the lobbyists, which, you know, I completely disagree with um, that whole, the way that whole thing is structured and how it runs, obviously, where big lobbyists can just come in and drop some dollars on these folks and, you know, they, they just start doing something strange for a little day. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's literally like these people are, um, dare I say, prostitutes, you know, like they, they just for a couple of dollars. They'll do something strange for a little piece of change. You know, it's absolutely ridiculous. And uh, when, when he said, uh, you know, we're breaking the fever, I can definitely relate to breaking a fever. As you guys know, uh, not long ago, I was I was sick. Actually, uh, last week, last week I was sick. And uh, yeah, I just remember waking up in the middle of the night, just absolutely drenched in sweat, just drenched. It was crazy. But uh yeah, after that, you know, I was, I was good to go. You know, I had to break the fever a little bit. But uh, back to Matt Gates. Congressman, is the resolution to empower McHenry dead at this point? Yeah, it won't be offered by Republicans based on uh, Speaker Designate Jordan's announcement just moments ago. And I think that's a good thing. The House of Representatives needs a speaker, not a speaker light. Uh, I Thanks. don't support using temporary powers uh, for Mr. McHenry. And I'm glad that our arguments seem to be persuasive to our colleagues. But Jordan seems... And I'm happy that uh, Matt Gates is making that argument because what, what they want to do is give more power to the temporary speaker, McHenry, <coughs> excuse me, I apologize. They want to give temporary power uh, 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 to, to uh, McHenry right now so that things can just keep rolling, right? And McHenry is basically no different than Kevin McCarthy. It's just going to be business as usual, sending money here, sending money there, taking, taking care of everybody else except for us. And Matt Gates is standing up and saying, absolutely the F not. No, that ain't why we started this. We're not going down that route. And I 100 percent agree to back this as his next strategy to give himself the time to cobble together more votes. I mean, this is something he's backed. Well, I, I, I like Jim Jordan. I'm voting for Jim Jordan, but I don't agree with him on every subject. And I certainly don't agree that what would be best for the House of Representatives is a temporary speaker pro tem. I think we need to elect a speaker. I think we've, we've got great folks in our conference. I think Jim Jordan sits atop that list and I look forward to voting for him again today. And one last question for you, because we are live here right now. How icy was it for you in that room? I heard it got pretty intense. Well, I'm not for everyone, as it turns out, and I have my detractors, but I'm an attorney by trade. I don't get emotional about the presentation of arguments and listening to other people's arguments. It doesn't affect how I think about people. I was there to make the substantive argument that speaker light is a bad idea, just like Bud Light. Um, but, but I far prefer us to continue having votes going forward. And, you know, when I held out with Speaker McCarthy, we had goals. We had specific things we were fighting for. I think a reason reasonable question to those that are holding out and not voting for Jordan is, what are you fighting for? What are your goals? What are your objectives here other than to, uh, than just recalcitrance? <laughs> Speaker light is a bad idea, just like Bud Light. <laughs> man, man, Bud Light ain't catching no breaks. I mean, what, what, what we did with Bud Light is absolutely incredible. That, that stuff is amazing, man absolutely amazing and it turns out that um you know 
you guys are actually doing some fantastic work out there, I see. Seems like you guys have been making lots of phone calls because allegedly some people are uh, getting a little squeezed. And some, uh, you know, Republicans that are voting no are just angry now because their phones are getting blown up. Not like actually literally blown up, but getting so many calls. I guess I got to be specific with that before somebody twists my words. Um, their phones are getting so many calls that they're just getting angry about it, uh, including <clears throat> one guy in the name of Vern Buchanan. Uh as you see from D.C. Drano, who now refuses to vote for Jim for speaker, was partying last night at the White House bowling alley. He's been in D.C. for eight terms and is now clearly part of the swamp. He'd rather party with Dems than listen to his voters. Florida deserves better. Uh, here, let me, I'll, I'll play it, but there's music in the background, so I'm, I'm going to have to. Uh, oh, oh, gracious. There we go. Um, yeah, as you heard there, there was a little bit of music in the background. So. Yeah, th this this is what these guys are are, are doing, right? But it, it's it's so it's so stressful. It's so stressful. But yeah, you're sitting there partying with Democrats, uh, you know. And I'm not saying that you know Democrats need to be his you know absolute enemy or anything like that. But come on, man, really? And you know, I I just find it funny that a lot of these folks that are a no on Jim Jordan, you know what state they're all from. Or not all, not all. Okay, I take take that part back. But you know what state at least three or four of them are from? Florida. Hmm. You know, and that that just that just for me personally, and you guys, and hey, listen, maybe maybe I'm ragging on Ron DeSantis once again. Y'all let me know how y'all feel in the comment section. But for me, that puts into question Ron DeSantis' leadership, right? Which was already in question. We already had questions about that, and I've called him out before on it. Right. You know, like when he was on the debate stage and he looked to his left, he looked to his right and, and just to see what everybody else was doing. And then he raised his hand, you know, and like, come on, you're supposed to be a leader. Why, why are you looking to see what everybody else got going on? Stand up. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I, I just find that interesting. You know, four of them are out of floor. most of them, most of the group, literally most of the group that is voting against Jim Jordan comes from Florida. Kind of interesting. Kind of interesting, you know, to say the least. But, um, yeah, you guys got to hear what Ken Buck says. Part of the reason that there's temper right now is this uh, constant barrage of phone calls. We have, mm. I have six full-time people answering the phones. I have 20,000 messages from people who, where we couldn't. So far, I've had four death threats. I've been evicted from my uh, office in, uh, the, in Colorado. Uh, I have notice of an eviction. Um, because the landlord is mad with my uh, voting record uh, on, on the speaker issue. Um, and everybody in the conference is getting this. So, so it's natural. Uh, family members have been approached and, and threatened. Uh, all kinds of things are going on. There's going to be some, uh, some tension. Four death threats, Congressman, because you're not supporting Jim Jordan? That's right. Part of the reason that there's now I don't agree with death threats, right? I, 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 can't, I can't get behind that. But I can get behind 20,000 phone calls. I absolutely love that. Absolutely love it. Swamping them. Swamping them with calls. Okay? Uh, let him know. This, this is unacceptable behavior. And, uh, hey, listen. The way that I see it, this whole thing going down is actually a good thing. Because now we all know who exactly needs to be voted out. Right? We, we know exactly who needs to go. It's out in the open now. No more hiding, right? No more throwing a rock and hiding your hands like, oh, no, no, I'm, I'm with the party, guys. I'm with the party. Uh-uh. Now you're out in the open. We see you. We know exactly who you are. Um, and like I said, you know, I, I, I don't agree with the death threats. I think that's a bit excessive and, and uh, really unnecessary, in my humble opinion. We don't need to be uh, sending death threats to anybody, but... We do need to let them make, you know, let them know how we actually feel. But, you know, the great thing about all of this is that Jim Jordan is not backing down because some Republicans would love to have Jordan back down. As a matter of fact, we checked out a clip uh, yesterday, I believe. Uh, was it Carlos? I can't remember the guy's name, but it was a Republican, right? One of the Republicans that voted no. He basically said Jim Jordan needs to drop out. Just needs to drop out, flat out. And I'm like, mm, 
Uh -uh. I would rather have the government shut down indefinitely than to have Jordan back out. That's just my personal opinion on it. And of course, uh, as Matt Gates has said before, they try to use these politics where it's, oh, well, the veterans aren't going to get paid. Well, that's your fault. You had a long time to get this whole situation figured out, you know, solved and, 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 and you know, ironed out. And you backed us into this corner. So that's on you. You know, it, it, it's, it, it just, ah, oh, man, Let, t Jim Jordan, take it away. So I'll just say this: we made the we made the pitch to um, members on the resolution as a way to lower the temperature and get back to work. Uh, we decided that wasn't where we we're going to go. I'm still running for speaker, and I plan to go to the floor uh, and get the votes and win this race. But I want to go talk with a, a few of my colleagues. Particularly, I want to talk with the 20 individuals who voted against me. Um, so that we can move forward and begin to work for the American Gary, people. Gary, 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 you know, part of part of me is like, man, I think it would be fun actually um, being a part of the House. You know, maybe, maybe, maybe I should run for office. You know, part, part part of me, right? But then the other part of me is like, yeah, I, I wouldn't be able to just sit there and, and take the BS. You know, uh, some of these guys like. Uh, uh, who, who was it? Uh, was it was it Mike Mike Rogers? I believe his name is. Uh, who actually switched his vote because people were calling his phone nonstop. So shout out to y'all. Okay, shout out to y'all. I forgot where he's from. But anyway, we we we've been doing our jobs and swamping these folks with calls. It's absolutely incredible. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Like I said, I can't get behind the death threats and the calling people spouses and whatnot. But the phone calls themselves absolutely loving it but you know uh when when mike rogers had went after matt gates and um <laughs> acted like he was gonna fight him man i just you know i just <laughs> some of this stuff is funny you know and then other parts like that i i'd probably get kicked out you know you, you you're not about to like come run up in my face bro and and like like you about to fight. You gonna catch these hands. <laughs> you know, and they grabbed Mike Robinson out of mouth and like pulled him back, you know. Uh this this was when uh uh McCarthy was trying to become speaker the first time and Matt Gates refused to vote for him. Mike Rogers got angry and you know and allegedly in the closed door meeting yesterday, uh someone else wanted to allegedly fight Matt Gates. So it's like, man, man. I I got Matt Matt Gates back all day. So any anybody that wants to fight Matt Gates, I'm fighting too. It's that simple. If we hey, listen, we <laughs> we going to have a royal rumble in here and listen, I'm a lot younger than basically all of them. And I ain't saying age got nothing to do with getting, you know, getting getting some paws put on you, but I don't know. Some some of these some of these Congress folks look a little look a little slow in the feet, you know. <laughs> Be hitting them with the rope and dope, dancing around them like Ali, you know. Hey, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. But uh, all seriousness, um, this thing has really gotten ridiculous, and uh, I, I I honestly at this point I don't even know where it's gonna go. I really don't because we've done our job right. They've They've talked about it, and we've actually convinced somebody like Mike Rogers to um, vote yes for Jim Jordan, which he was originally going to vote no. But still, you have these individuals, and some of them in heavily Republican areas who still refuse to vote yes on Jim Jordan. So honestly, I don't know where this goes. I think Jim Jordan should stay in the race until the very end, um, until he actually is speaker. If that means the government stays shut down for a long period of time, then so be it. At least people get to see, oh, things aren't so bad when the government's shut down. Because, of course, Democrats always try to make it seem like an exist existential threat to America when the government is shut down. Oh, my goodness. We, we can't have the government shut down. Oh, oh no, 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 no. Like, no, it, it, no, it doesn't mean a whole lot, you know, for the, for the average person. Just saying. But y'all let me know what you thought about all of this in the comment section below. Like, share, comment. 
hit that subscribe button before you go. Peace and love. I'm out.